Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back in Hoenn for the third episode of this new random card challenge. Last time out, Watson tortured me for the best part of a day while I attempted to beat his team with Bellsprout, Meowth, Nidoran, and Venonat. If you haven't seen either of the first two episodes, you can check them out, they'll be linked in the description. Alright, thanks to the Morville gym leader slowing us down, we're playing catch up. If all goes well, we'll hopefully be adding two new gym badges today. Flannery and Norman can both be incredibly difficult to overcome though, so no promises. Before getting down to the gym battles though, we've got the small matter of a face-off with a Team Magma leader, Maxi. Alright, we need to draw three cards for this one. It looks like we'll be using Haunter, Sentret, and Dojuo in our first battle against Maxi. It's not an ideal team to use against Mighty Anna, Zubat, and Camerupt, but I think we can work out a decent strategy. Let's have a look at the team. Flip the Sentrets up first at level 24, and she's got the moves Scratch, Defense Curl, Quick Attack, and Slam. Radon the Haunter's up next, also at 24, and his moveset's made up of Lick, Hypnosis, Curse, and Nightshade. We didn't have great TM options at this point, but I like what we've got to work with here. Finally, we've got Bolt the Dojuo at level 25, and he's equipped with Pet, Growl, Pursuit, and Try Attack. That final move is one of my all-time favorites, and I got to replace Fury Attack when Dojuo learned it, so that's always nice. Alright, let's give this one a try. The battle begins with Maxi's Mightyena facing off against Flip the Sentret. After Intimidate lower Sentret's attack though, we recall the normal type and send in Dojuo to replace her. Mightyena flicks some sand into Bolt's face, faces? And that obscures his vision enough to send Try Attack off target. Seeing his strategy pay off right away, Maxi piles on instructing Mightyena to use Sand Attack again. Bolt sends a trio of beams in the direction of the sand, and this time it's a direct hit. Don't ask me exactly where that third beam's coming from, because believe me, you do not want to know. Weakened from the hit but still standing, Mighty N is forced to use Sand Attack once more, but it's no use. Dojuo's not even using his eyes anymore. Try Attack is being focused on the area the heads are being targeted from, and once again it lands. Mighty N is defeated without dealing any damage, and Maxi's plan definitely isn't looking great right now. Zubat's up next for the Team Magma leader, and we recall the Blinded Bird to send in Haunter. On switching, Radon's cracked by a wing attack, but he quickly reacts to counter with Hypnosis. That puts Zubat to sleep, allowing Haunter to attack with back-to-back -back Nightshades. The Poison Bat awakens to confuse Radon with Supersonic, before Maxi sprays him with a Super Potion. That recovers all of Zubat's HP, and Haunter wastes the first turn of recovery by hitting himself in confusion. The two go back and forth with Nightshade and wing attack, but another Super Potion leaves Zubat in control. In a last ditch attempt to wrest control from the Bat, Radon goes for Hypnosis, but misses completely. One final wing attack finishes off Haunter to level things up at 2-2. We send Dojuo back in, hoping for a speedy finish to the whole Zubat affair. A single try attack does indeed hit home first to take Maxi down to 1. That final team member is Camerupt, and although he's a powerful opponent, we've still got two full health Pokemon. In the end, Flip isn't even required. A trio of Dojuo try attacks put down Camerupt to hand us a reasonably easy win. After the hell on earth that was Watson, that was probably needed. That victory is a bit of a free pass because we've got a couple of strong gym leaders coming up. Flannery could be incredibly easy or ridiculously hard depending on the Pokemon we draw. Norman will probably be insanely tough no matter who we've got to use though. Alright, we've got to draw a team of four for the Laverage gym battle and we could really do with a water type. Let's have a look. We're going to be using Onyx, Roselia, Paris, and Rattata. Hmm. It's not great. Flannery's Torkoal can be very difficult to deal with because it combines White Smoke and White Herb with a stupidly high defense stat. A decent special attacker would have been nice here, but we'll have to make do with Onyx. Rattata could be okay in the early battle, the less said about the other two though, the better. Let's check out the movesets. Crash the Onyx at level 24 with the moves Strength, Screech, Harden, and Rock Throw. Honestly, having a Rock-type attack isn't even that useful against the Lavridge Gym Leader. Only half of Flannery's team is actually weak to rock, so we'll probably be relying on strength here. Begonia the Rosalia is up next, also at 24, and he's got Mega Drain, Growth, Leech Seed, and Stun Spore. I feel like we've only really got the Paralysis there, I'm not sure Rosalia will be able to live through any hits. Cremini the Paris is a couple of levels higher at 26, and her moveset's made up of Cut, Stun Spore, Poison Powder, and Spore. Again, we're all in on the status moves there. I don't think Cremini is even going to get a chance to move here, but you never know. Finally, we've got Toying the Rattata at level 29, with the moves Tackle, Tail Whip, Quick Attack, and Hyper Fang. This one's going to be a bit of a nightmare, I think. Let's give it a try. Flannery leads off with her Nummel, and we start things off with Onyx. Seeing as Nummel's partial ground typing means that Rock isn't super effective, we call for Crash to attack with Strength. 
Onyx lifts Nummel up with his tail and slams her into the battlefield, but she recovers quickly enough to charge into him with takedown. That's a very bizarre choice and Crash barely notices the collision. In fact, with recoil it almost damages Nummel as much as it did Onyx. Crash snatches up the fire type yet again to use strength, but this time Flannery's wised up and calls for Sunny Day. That will be Nummel's last action as a third strength finishes her off, but it could come into play later on. Flannery calls on Slugma next, and as a pure fire type we can go all out on Rock Throw. Crash's speed allows him to sling a series of stones into Slugma, but it isn't quite enough to score a knockout. Smog does next to nothing to Onyx though, who plays it safe to knock out the fire slug with strength. This has been a surprisingly solid start. Camerupt's next in line, but knowing Onyx will be key against Torkoal, we recall him and send out Paris. In what can only be described as a miracle, Cremini survives two turns against Camerupt to put the Volcanic Camel to sleep with Spore. We make another switch to bring in Rattata, whose attack power and speed should be our best chance of taking down Camerupt quickly. Toyn lays a Hyperfang on the sleeping Camerupt, but it's not enough to wake her up. A critical hit on the second Hyperfang takes down Flannery's penultimate Pokemon, so somehow we've made it to Torkoal having lost less than 20 HP in total. I really would rank Flannery's Ace as one of the toughest Pokemon in the game though. Toyn's powerful Hyperfang barely dents Torkoal's shell before Overheat cremates the poor rat. We switch in Cremini hoping for another miracle, but we've only earned one. Another overheat blows away Paris, the fireworks show probably good for about another 15 knockouts over. We send in Roselia next and call for Stun Spore. That paralyzes Torkoal, but it doesn't stop a third overheat causing another KO, leaving us with only Onyx. Thanks to some peculiar move selections from Flannery, Crash is able to whittle the paralyzed Torkoal's health way down. Another timely critical hit hands us the most bizarrely simple victory ever. I say that because in probably 20 attempts prior to this one, I never really even got close. I mean, we did lose 3 of 4 team members in the end, but Onyx was still in good shape. I think I needed the healthy dose of luck I got there. Flannery's Torkoal really is a pain to take down and our team was not well suited to the task. We somehow picked up the win though, so let's get out of here before Flannery asks for a best 2 out of 3. Alright, we're gonna need another team of 4 for our faceoff against Norman now that we've returned to Pedalburg. We're going to be using the team of Slowpoke, Unknown, Psyduck, and Nidoran Female. Oh god, that's really not good. Norman's team is seriously tough, so we're going to need a lot of luck to get this one over the line. The base stat total of Norman's worst Pokemon is comfortably better than that of our best, and his best is almost exactly double ours. When we're matching levels and using no items unlike most opponents, being this inferior makes things ridiculously difficult. Let's have a look at the team anyway. Demora the Slowpoke's up first at level 27, and her moveset's made up of Secret Power, Growl, Curse, and Yawn. The combination of those last two is the reason our only damage dealing move is Secret Power. It's a really nice attack that has a 30% chance of causing a secondary effect. What that is depends on the terrain, and as we're indoors it'll be Paralysis. All in all, I'm pretty happy with that moveset. Next up we've got Grappa the Unknown, who's also at 27, and the only move it has is Hidden Power. I had to catch 19 different unknown before eventually picking up one with a fighting type hidden power which just seemed completely necessary here. Schofield the Psyduck's at level 29 and he's equipped with Confusion, Scratch, Screech and Disable. It's another pretty weird moveset but it's the best I can do for this matchup. Finally we've got Rena the Nidoran at level 31 and she's got Bite, Growl, Tail Whip and Double Kick. Another Gym Leader, another Nidoran with a super effective Double Kick. Once again it's probably going to be vital here. Alright, let's give this a go. Norman starts off with Spinda and we send out Slowpoke first. The strategy here was to put the normal type to sleep and then set up with Curse. Spinda starts with Facade and Teeter Dance, so now we just have to hope we can get lucky. Demora only spends 2 turns confused and manages to break through once, so not too bad. After a trio of Curses, Spinda wakes up and attacks with Facade, but with 3 defense boost it's not too bad. The raised attack means secret power almost one shot Spinda, so Norman's forced to use a Hyper Potion. That works out for us because it's better to deal with now rather than later. Another secret power leaves Spinda back in the same position, but this time Norman calls for Teeter Dance. Demore is a bit too slow to realize she's confused though, so secret power finishes the job and gives us an early lead. Vigoroth's up next for Norman, and thanks to all of the defense boosts, the gym leader calls for Faint Attack. That cuts away exactly half of Slowpoke's remaining HP, so she's probably only got one last chance to attack. Secret Power takes Vigoroth below half health, and for the first time, the secondary effect kicks in to paralyze him. Unfortunately, that doesn't stop another faint attack, but thanks to a low roll, Demora survives on 3 HP. 
It is almost amusing that she can't even outspeed paralyzed opponents, but that doesn't matter now. She finishes off Norman's second Pokemon and Slacking's out third. This is a little terrifying. Slacking makes quick work of Slowpoke, of course, to take us down to three, and Psyduck's out next. Thanks to an abysmal call from Norman, Schofield's able to get off three consecutive screeches without being hit. Then somehow he makes the same mistake again, predicting an attack and going for counter. Sadly for him, we've switched out, which means Nidoran now has two free turns to attack. That's enough for Rena. A double double kick demolishes Slacking, leaving Norman with only one. The repeated calls for unnecessary counters were a nice favour from our dad, so let's make it count now. Linoon's up last, and even though it's a bit of a risk, I have to switch out to Unknown so everyone gets a chance. Sadly, Grappa's wiped out before even getting a chance to show off its hidden power. Spending a ton of time maxing out Unknown's attack EV seems like a bit of a waste now. Psyduck is back in next, and although a crit facade leaves him weak, he does manage to harshly lower Linoon's defence with Screech. Another facade finishes the job and takes it down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Rena returns to battle, and Norman makes another insane call. Belly Drum is a dangerous move to see when Linoon first comes in, but with Nidoran about to attack following a Screech, it's just very weird timing. Linoon's maxed out attack can't stop Double Kick from knocking him out and earning us the win. Here's hoping there isn't any committee that investigates how trainers acquired their badges, because our dad repeatedly choosing the worst possible move may seem suspicious. Like Flannery, that took a lot of tries, but even so, I still think Watson was more time consuming than the two combined. All in all, that might be the toughest stretch of three gyms that I've had in any challenge, and if you've seen some of the challenges I've done, you know that's a serious claim. Let's call it there for today. Next time we'll be heading for Fortree City, but until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.